Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. So this week I'm starting a new series called Studio One, The Basics. And we're going to start with the most basic of all, and that is signal flow. And I don't think a lot of people talk about this enough, but it's very important to know signal flow. And we're going to go over it right now. So the first thing we have here is we have a loop here, and that's going to be our source, because that's where any signal flow starts with the source, either the thing you're trying to record or the thing you're trying to play back. In this case, we're playing back. So we play back this loop. It goes into the channel here, and the first place it lands is at the inserts. Now, I have a couple inserts here. I have a distortion and an EQ. We'll turn them off for now, and then I'll just play it. I got this turned down on purpose so it doesn't get that annoying. <clears throat> so let's turn on the, uh, we'll turn on these one at a time. Here's the distortion. EQ. Okay, so you notice that affects, that affects the entire signal, right? The entire signal going through there gets inserted into the channel. All the signal runs through those devices. The next place it goes is, you see these sends? It doesn't go to the sends. It goes around the sends. We're going to come back to those in a second. It hits the channel fader. Now, from the channel fader, it comes up and it goes out the output. Now, we have this output here set to the master bus, which is here. So if I play this, the signal is going to come down the channel, through the inserts, up the fader, out the output, in this case the master bus, and then out the master bus through this output, right? It enters the master bus, at the, think of it as the top of the channel strip. It hits not the mix effects, ignore that. It hits the inserts first. Okay, again, so you have another set of inserts. So after that, after it goes through the inserts, um, doesn't go through this yet, it hits, the it hits the fader, comes out the fader. Instead of going straight to the output, though, it goes to this post insert, which is here. If we turn this, if we turn this on, I got a bit crusher to make it very obvious. So we can turn that off. Okay, now, why would you need a post insert here after the fader? Well, you know, it's just versatility. It is sometimes I'll put a limiter, and if I'm going to touch this fader at all, move it up or move it down, I don't want to clip the output, so I'll put a limiter sometimes after this. But, you know, it's there for whatever you need it for. The point here is to just learn signal flow, okay? Now we're going to talk about the sends. I kind of skipped over those the first go around. So as the signal hits the top, hits the inserts, goes out like we talked about. Now the sends, what is a send? Good question. So the send is basically when the signal is going to come through here, it's going to hit your fader and then the signal is going to split, okay? You're going to still go out your master bus, like we showed, but then a copy of that is up here at your sends. And how much of it gets sent is dependent on this fader here. So if I play this, i got a reverb set up here. And it'd be pretty obvious it's going to go to the reverb, right? Let's send some. Helps if you turn the reverb on. Okay, I got a reverb and an auto filter in there just so you can hear it better. But basically what happens is the signal enters. Now, remember, we've tapped off, we've tapped off some of this signal after this fader here, and we're gonna send some to this reverb effects bus, okay? What's a bus? Do we drive it? Do we take the bus? Do we need a bus pass? No. A bus is an internal 
place you can route signals, okay? Internal to, in this case, Studio One's mixer. Now you notice, notice one thing on this effects bus here is there's no sends coming off of here. And I think the reason they do that is so that you won't create a feedback loop. Although sometimes it's desirable to do that, but most of the times no. So it doesn't have a send. That's the big difference. Um, you know, when you're looking at these, when you're creating things, like if I create a bus here, uh, if I create a bus for selected channels, notice <clears throat> I have a bus here, right, which could be an effects return. If I, if I just inserted an effect, it would be an effect return, no different from this one. But the advantage I have by using this is I could send a copy of the signal somewhere else if I wanted to. Easiest way to distinguish the two is a bus can only accept internal routing into the input and a channel connects to the outside world. So if I click on the, on the input on the channel, you'll see all my inputs from my uh, sound card, physical ins and outs on the sound card, or I can internally route from VST instruments that I have loaded. So I have an Omnisphere and I have a punch. I can actually use those as the input to the channel also and record that if I wanted to. Okay, so let's take a look at the combined signals here. We have our loop coming through our channel and then we also have these sends that are splitting off going to the reverb right here. Then it's coming out of this fader going to the master bus. So they're both arriving at this master bus going to the output to our ears. Okay, now that we understand how the signals are getting into the channel and then splitting off from the sends to the reverb effects return and then coming from there going to the master bus, both of these signals are going to the master bus combining, right? So the concept's starting to come together now. Now it comes into the top of the master bus and the first thing it hits is, you guessed it, an insert. So I have an SSL channel strip inserted in an insert here. And the reason I chose this one is because here's where routing is going to help you. I've got a plug in here that has a very similar signal flow to it as the channel strip itself. So what you're going to have is you're going to have an insert inside of an insert point. Okay. So the first thing that happens is the sound arrives into this plug and it hits the line slash mic preamp section then it goes through the filters so if I grab this filter I can take all the low end out so I can thin it out if I want or I could take, a, take away some of the high end dull it so far that's all we've done right in order to get the dynamic section and the EQ section into the signal path you have to insert them so I have to enable the dynamics like this and if I play it we still have nothing happening okay I have to decide which one of these dynamic processors do I want inserted now into the path first one is a compressor I'll put the compressor in now you definitely see it working you can hear it working right here now I can also add the gate That's more of the sound I was looking for. So what I was adjusting here is, is I grab this fader here because I know my signal flow, this volume coming into here will affect this threshold to give me the desired. I could also move the threshold around, but this is not a tutorial on gates. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you that we've got a compressor and a gate inserted into this channel strip that is an insert on our master bus. You following me? Okay. We can also insert the EQ. Add a bunch of low end to it. Okay, then it comes through here. Notice, then it goes to the fader, just very similar to this. Comes out of the fader, goes to an output trim knob. And this is just to trim the output or add or take away gain when needed. Okay. Sometimes you'll be going from this to another processor to another processor. I'm sure you guys have all heard the term gain staging. Well, this is kind of where it starts. You have to know signal flow 
in a, in in order to gain stage from the device to device. So the reason you gain stage is because you're going to go from plug-in to plug-in to plug-in, right? In these inserts, you can add a whole bunch of plug-ins in here. Well, when you do, sometimes the input level to the next plug-in will be either too loud or too soft. So you need to adjust it to get to the optimum level into the next plug-in. That's kind of what gain staging is, okay? And there's lots of reasons for it. We won't go, we won't go into it here. But just know that, okay? That's what that uh, trim knob, sorry. That's what this trim, output trim is, okay? So, then it goes to the output, and it goes to your speakers, to your ears. The reason it comes out your speakers is because that's what we have selected. When we come out of this fader here, when the signal comes in, goes through the inserts, goes out the fader, remember, if we have this post insert turned on it's going to go through this then go out the output but if I click on the output notice I can select different outputs I don't have to go to the main output if I don't want to um, with the Apollo I can go in a virtual one and two let's say now if I play this it is going into Hold on. I'm gonna open up my. Let me open up my console here. Now, I've routed this signal from Studio One to the Apollo console by doing this. Okay. Now, not all your, not all interfaces are gonna allow you to do this, but you could send it out of ADAT. You could send it out another line output out of your interface if you wanted to send it somewhere else and then record it or send it back in or whatever you wanted to do you could do right so I have it sent to this virtual one and two and what that does is it sends the signal from studio one into the Apollo console shows up right here this is an input meter and then you know why would I want to do that well I have a plug-in inserted a tape plug-in inserted into the Apollo console okay you can deactivate it and you'll hear it right turn on Give me a... okay so you guys heard the difference right well you can send signals to different places from the master it doesn't have to go to your monitors all the time I just wanted to kind of mention that Okay, now we're going to look at solo safe on effects returns. So I have an effect return here, and see how the uh, solo is green? That's because it's in solo safe mode. And what solo safe mode is, if I solo, if I, well, let me play this. I have a kick drum with our loop. Now let's solo the loop, okay? As you can see here, as I solo this track, we're still hearing the reverb, even though I haven't soloed that, right? That's so when I hear this, I still hear my reverb return, right? If I uncheck this, hold down shift and click it, now when I solo it, I'm not hearing the reverb anymore, right? Now I could manually unmute it, but that's why you have this solo safe option. So shift click, solo safe. There you go. Okay, I hope this covered just the basic signal flow of Studio One. Um, in the next one, we'll uh, talk about uh, EQ, I think, next time. So, and I want to talk about the different types of EQ. I, I never see anybody talking about this. There are more than just fully parametric EQs out there. So. We'll kind of look at all the different types of EQ and how they work and when you should use them maybe. So until next time, later.